and welcome to of cost accounting. In our last class, we discussed extensively about the introduction to cost accounting, the cost classification, and other elements of cost accounting. We also looked at the comparison between financial accounting and cost accounting. And we also look at the similarity between cost accounting and management accounting as all these are essential to passing our examination. I haven't talked about that. We also look at some cost classification in which we say that costs are actually classified into some various categories, which include cost elements, cost which include elements, nature, behaviors. These are the three main ones that are that costs are being classified into. And we also say that cost classified according to elements includes material, labor, and overheads in which the overhead can also be called overhead expenses, so we call it expenses. And the element is those things we incurred in cost. Remember that cost accounting are used for managerial purposes and are widely used in the manufacturing activity. In the manufacturing activity, we tend to know the cost of material, the cost of the labor, and other overhead expenses that we incurred in making a product. All these are the what element of cost. We also discussed the bad material cost, which is said it includes the cost of the raw material, cost of the assembling the raw material, the cost of work in progress up to the finished. Goods and also what. I haven't talked about that part of the element of that expenses. And we said cost can actually be the we said that direct costs are the costs that are attributable to the cost of producing an item. Any cost that we can actually trace to the production of output is known as what direct cost. Let's take for instance, if you look at the water bottle, pick a water bottle. If you buy a water bottle and I ask you what is the cost of producing this water bottle, the first thing you will mention is the word cost of water, because you can see that water, we are, we are incurring cost on it. We spend money in that water, either treating the water and the rest. Cost of the bottle, that plastic, you have spent money, either to produce the bottle or to buy it. We can also see label. The cost of labeling is also another cost. Then we know that it is employee that would have worked in that cost. All those costs that you can actually recognize with a product is called direct cost. Why the one that's also incurred, but we cannot particularly trace it to the production of an output is called what? Indirect cost. And whether direct or indirect, it is material, labor, and expenses. So when the classification according to the elements of nature, when we combine it together, we are going to have what you call a cost card. And the cost card will now look as though as this, direct material, direct labor, direct expenses. It will give us what to call what? Prime cost. Prime cost is the cost of producing a unit, which are directly attributable to the production process. What is the grammar that I've spoken? Costs that we can recognize with a product is called prime cost. And prime cost includes direct material, direct labor, direct expenses, or direct overhead expenses. After our prime cost, we now go to indirect cost. Indirect costs are what we call overhead cost. I mean, sorry, are what we call indirect cost. And indirect cost is, is indirect material labor and what overhead after that we now have expenses which we call overhead cost addition of addition of direct plus indirect plus overheads equal to what 
total cost. Equal to what? Total cost. So if I've asked you that what is a total cost, you should be able to tell me that total cost includes direct material. I mean, includes direct material, direct labor, direct expenses. Indirect material, direct labor, direct expenses, and overhead expenses. Is that taken? Yes. Let us now go to the business of the day, which you called cost behavior and analysis. Don't mind me writing variability. Costs, I can call it classification according to what behaviors. And that is also the topic of today, which you call cost behaviors and analysis. So what about the classification according to the behavior? What is the behavior? How does the cost even relate in an organization? How does the cost moves? That's what's called behavior. If I ask you, what is your behavior? Is your behavior good or not? Yeah, I don't want to judge that. But how can you judge your behavior? It is the changes in your behavior that are going to know. Is your behavior still the same? As we know you for last year, it's the same thing that I have seen you for this year. Oh yeah, the one that cannot even be predicted, that are just changing like clock. That is what you call classification according to behavior. This classification according to behavior is now divided into three. One, fixed cost. Your behavior is divided into three. One, when you are fixed, when you do not change at all. Two, when you are variable. When you didn't fix, you are, you are not predicted. You are zigzag like this. One cannot even predict you. That's what you call variable. You not even give us a hope. That is the three classification. No, you do not change. Irrespective of the changes in the volume of activities, fiscals do not change. Fiscals remain stagnant. Fiscals remain unchanged. Fiscals remain stable. But variable costs, it changes with the level of activities. When the price increases, quantity increase or reduce. That's what you call variable. Semi-variable or semi-variable cost. That's what we call missed cost. That one is the combination of fixed cost and variable cost. The combination of fixed cost and variable cost is called semi-variable or semi-fixed cost, or we call it mixed cost. Now, let us look at the method of segregating this means cost into fixed and variable costs, which I call the business of the day. So the method of means cost, or which I can call cost behaviors and analysis, is divided into three. The first one is high and low method. And at times we call it high and low point method. Okay. High and low method, or we call it high and low point method. When we say high and low method, high and low method is a method of cost that tends to look at the highest cost compared it with the lowest cost, and also look at the highest output and compare it with the lowest output. That's what we call high and low method, or at times we call it high and low point method. Okay, okay. The second one is regression analysis method. And the third one is accounting analysis method or account analysis. We have many more though, but I'll be focusing on these three as related to your examination. So let me pick them one after the other and discuss extensively on them. Let's get started. When we say high and low, I'll give you an overview of what an high and low is. High, the highest cost and highest output. Low, the lowest cost and the lowest output. If you have 400 and 100, 
400 is the highest, 100 is the lowest. 200 quantity and 50 quantities. 200 is the highest, 50 is the lowest. Get it right. The differential between them is what we call high and low method. So high and low method approach, consider the differences or the difference in total cost between the two different volume and divide the incremental cost by the word volume. So let's take for instance, let's go to test one, text understanding. Edu Limited incurred the following cost at certain level of activities. 1,000 students, 80,000 Naira. 600 students, 50,000 Naira. What is the variable and the fixed cost? Anybody? Yeah, you can drop your, you can drop it on the chat box. Okay, good of you. Yes. The first thing is, before going further, separate your costs. This two is cost. This two is what? Quantity. If you recognize this, then the solution is near. Now, if I had to, what is the highest cost? You will tell me 80,000. Is that not? And what is the lowest cost? You will tell me 50,000. If I ask you what is the highest output, you will tell me 1,000. If I, I mean, what is the highest quantity? You will tell me 1,000. The lowest quantity, you will tell me 600. That is how to first recognize it. You've known your high, then you've known your low. It is high cost divided by what? High revenue. Okay. High cost divided by what? High revenue. Now, let us solve. I've divided it into the quantity and the cost. Okay. Let me have my high here. Let me have my low here. What is the highest quantity, highest numbers of students? 1,000, lowest numbers of students, 600. So we have 1,000, quantity is 1,000, low is 600. What about the cost? 80 and 50. So come here, 80,000, 50,000. So, what is the difference between the two? 1,000 minus 600, we give you what? 400. This is quantity. For cost, it will give you what? 30,000. Is that not? So if you are not to find the high and low point, you now have high and low point equals to cost divided by what? Quantity. The cost is 30,000 divided by what? 400. Is somebody punching calculator? I punch a calculator. What is 30,000 divided by 400? Zero comes to zero, zero comes to zero. Four year one, four in 37. Is that not? Carry two, four in 20, that is five. So it is what 75. But what do we use this for? We use it for what? For calculation of the variable costs. Welcome to the show of cost accounting. Let's get started. Yes, cost and behavioral analysis. Cost behavior. analysis. So for cost behaviors analysis, it started from the word fixed cost, y equals to a plus bx. y equals to what? a plus what? bx. In which a is the fixed cost, b is the variable cost, x is the level of what? activities. A is the what? A is the fixed cost. 
V is the variable cost and X is the volume, or let me call it level of activities in order to avoid what confusion. Let it be known that all what you are calculating in that fixed cost, which I said, you can use high and low, you can use regression, you can use account analysis at the calculation of variable costs. At the what? The calculation of the variable cost. A can be gotten, the fixed cost, A can be gotten as Y bar minus B X bar, okay? In which Y bar is equal to summation Y over N. You don't have to cram. You don't have to what? You don't have to cram. Y bar is summation Y over what? N. That is in a situation where you are given your equation in a tabular form, okay? We are going to demonstrate everything for the purpose of your class. Is that taken? We were given from the question, from the question, we are given the numbers of students. Let me put it like this, numbers of students. And what? The, the cost. The numbers of students is what? 1,000. This is X. This is Y. This is X. This is Y. Cost is usually for Y. Okay. I want to do something. That one is to the line spacing is too wide. Let me see numbers of students. And I cut down what X. This is 1,600 respectively. And we have the cost. The cost is taken by Y. And cost is 80,000 and 50,000 respectively. So using high and low points, using high and low in calculating the variable cost, that is B. It is the B that we are calculating. In calculating the B, you say using what? Using high and low method. Welcome. If you want to use I and low method, you just have it as does. Highest cost B equal to. Okay, don't worry. Don't let me write in full. Highest cost minus lowest cost divided by. IS, if you like, you can say IS output, or, but I'm using IS quantity minus what lowest quantity. What is the IS cost? IS cost here is what 80,000. That is what I've done earlier. I'm only explaining it so that you can get what I've done. It won't be as if I've just done magic or perform magic. Highest cost 80,000 minus lowest cost 50,000 divided by IS quantity. 1,000 minus lowest quantity, 600. This will give us 80 minus 50. This is 30,000. 30,000 divided by what? 1,000 minus 600, that is what 400. 300,000 minus 600, minus 400 will give you what? 750. So the B is equals to what? 750. If I then want to take it further, that is when I will now have, that is when I will now determine the what, the fees cost. That is how I have gotten my what, my 75. So if I want to take it further, I will then determine my what, my fees cost. But be given in table. So I don't just have to bother myself. I don't have to bother myself. This one is not tabulated. They are just giving us the numbers of students for 1,000 for 600 and the each cost that is attributable. Since I've gotten the B to be worth 750, you can then represent it in an equation. Your equation, go back there, is A plus B X bar. What did I call X bar? 
B X bar. X bar is a what? Or B X is a level of activities. Do not forget that. If you like, I can call it X bar. If you like, I can call it X. Okay. What we've got in here, I said it is B. Do not forget. So if you then want to calculate your A, A plus represent it. What is B? B is now 75, it's now 75 X. So this is the equation. It is from here. It is from there that we now be finding all what we are asked to find. Is that taking? It is from there that we are going to find all what we are asked to find. For the first one, if the cost of 1,000, the cost of 1,000 student is equal to what? Is equal to 80,000. So what is the fixed cost in that cost? It means that where, where the Y is equal to 80,000, which is the cost, then what is fixed cost? Fixed cost unknown. Now let us find the fixed cost that is unknown. In order to find the unknown fixed cost, don't worry yourself, just go back to your equation. Your equation gives you y equals to a plus b x bar, right? Fine. And your b has been known to be 75. This y is now what? 80,000. A is unknown because it is fixed cost. Your b is 75 because that is the variable cost in that activities. The 75 is the variable cost. This 80,000 naira cost is for how many numbers of students? Go back. It is for 1,000 students, okay? You now go. Just write your level of activities is what? 1,000. Since your level of activities is 1,000 from here, you can do your mathematics Jimmy, right? Fine. Before you collect like times, I like to work steadily and in step because all these attract mark. Remember, examiner marks according to the steps and not the final answer. This is ICANN. For ICANN, you work steadily and you have to follow the examiner's guidelines. So A plus 75 times 1,000, this will give us what 75,000, right? From here, just collect like times. Let me write it here for you in case for your study. So to collect the like times, you will have 80 and 75 are like times. First of all, write this 80,000. This is A plus you are transferring plus 75 to the other side. If plus cross across equal to, the sign will change to what? Minus. This is elementary mathematics. Transfer the 75 to the other side. You have your what? 75,000. Equals to what? What remain here? It remain A. So you can turn it back to the left hand side. So A equal to 80,000 minus 75,000 it will give you what? 5,000. So 5,000 is your fixed cost, while your variable cost is 75, and your level of activities remain what? 1,000. For the second one, in which the level of activity, okay, let me say for 600 students. I hope you are following and you're actually getting it, right? If no, the comment section is available. Please do drop a comment. You still go back there. Y equal to A plus BX, and you can write BX bar. Yeah, Y equal to, what is the cost for the 600 students? The cost for the 600 students is what, 50,000 Naira. So your Y is equal to 50, 
thousand naira, and your B, which is available because we've already calculated that, remains your seventy five naira. So now find the fees cost. Your level of activities is for six hundred students. Do not forget. Therefore, your wife. Therefore, your y will now equal to what? A is or no. Okay, A is what? Question mark or no. So A plus, what is our B now? B is now what? 75. Why our X is the level of activities for the 600 students? Now represent it, represent it. Y is what? 50,000. Is the unknown. 75 times and 600 will give us what? what? Oh, yeah, work, work, work. So our 75 times 600 will give us 1,000. Have your 45. Thousand. Okay. So by the time you collect like times here, therefore your fees cost will also equal to what fifty thousand. Take plus forty five to the other side. It will change to what minus forty five thousand naira. So a will now equal to what five thousand naira. That is how to solve for what. High and low point method. If you are also given a regression analysis, the same thing, you are just going to use a formula method for the regression analysis and you get the same thing. Is that taking? So that is that. That is how to actually solve for cost behaviors and analysis. I have some questions and answer for you here but we shall continue from that. And this is a question for you just to practice. Okay, this is an assignment. Practice this assignment and to be submitted before the next class. I hope you all understood that. If it is not clear, please can this signify? Okay, thank you, Claire. Thank you, Claire. Yes, I'm seeing you all through the comment session. Okay, since that one is clear to everyone, we are actually through with the cost behaviors and analysis. Let us go to the element of cost of material. And this, we will be calculating the various costs that involve material. This might actually lead us to calculation of some various element of cost, which also lead us to Calculation of inventory, holding cost, ordering cost, EOQ, and the rest. Are we set? If yes, let's get started. Remember that we said the element of cost are divided into three, basically. We have material, labor cost, and expenses, which you call overheads. Now we are examining the material cost as an element of cost. Like I said earlier, that material cost is a significant portion of the total cost for many businesses because that is what they actually use to generate their revenue. If there's no cost control for material cost, it might lead to the highest expenses for the organization. And where the highest cost of production, no matter the revenue, it will be eaten up. That is why cost control analysis or a cost accountant are vital in an organization because they think to focus on the reduction of the cost of their cost of production, which is known as cost of sales. And going through uh, the cost of sales, the one that actually eat up most of the cost are actually material costs. So in order to minimize the cost, material cost control is very important. 
And therefore, we shall actually be looking at the mechanism, the various mechanism that we can use to control this material cost. Likewise, we also provide a structure to determine the material cost in order for us to be, to be able to take effective decision. And the various classification of material that we have includes uh, raw material, work in progress, and finished goods. But we also have what we call a merchandise material that is available for sales. Okay. You know, according to IFRS 5, assets held for sales are not for sales. This is material ready for sales. The procurement of material in order for you to resell it is what we call merchandise ready for sales. When you bought, when you purchase raw material, in order for you to resell it, let's take a look for those people that are actually selling flour, or those people who are selling rice. You will see that they will procure raw rice, and after that, they are also selling it raw to some people that are going to cook it and use it to trade. That is what we call merchandise ready for sales. And we also have another one which we called any other one that do not that forms the component of the raw material the one that cannot be classified as finished uh, finished goods rather is not classified as work in progress item but you can actually classify it as what all the component of material okay we also have someone we call the consumable it might be in terms of the stationary stationary not stationary Stationary are office equipment, stationary are assets. Then we have the one we use for packaging and the likes. This will ultimately lead us to what we call stock control level, SCL. When we talk of stock control level, we have looked at the various costs incurred in procuring materials. Then how are we going to actually control costs? To control costs, the first element we are having under the store control is the, follow, uh, the various levels at which we control costs, which we minimize costs, are actually a minimum of five, but more than, but basically we focus on five levels of cost minimization which includes the minimum stock control, we have the maximum stock control, we have the reorder level, we have the reorder quantity, which we call EOQ, and we have the average stock level. Remember that when we are doing a stock control activity, you will also need to ask yourself, am I actually doing FIVO or LIVO method? How am I finishing out the stock to the customers? Is it according to the demand or according to first in first out basis or according to first in last out basis or according to last in first out basis? These are all the questions you have to ask yourself as a good cost accountant. Okay, excuse me. So let us take each level one after the other. But before I do that, I would like to illustrate and take the class with a question. And the question goes thus. That following that relates to the what good work company limited, which refers to material AY4. Material AY4 is the name of that material that we are that we want to use to produce good work. That we want to use to produce goods for good work company limited. And the various components includes 12,000 units of the material that we are going to use for every day for 360 days in a year. It's cost because we are ordering it from Ghana. And the cost of one unit is 12,000 CDs. And it will cost us 10% of this amount to hold each unit of the AY4 in stock. That is, if you want to have stock inventory, it will cost us what? 10%. Likewise, daily usage of material A4 will not exceed 12,500 units and will not be less than. 12,500 units. The most reliable supplier, we takes a maximum period of four days to deliver 
but shortest delivery period could be involved within two days. Keep note that we shall use these activities for the purpose of each level of controlling the material cost. Let's get started. So let us take them one after the other. The first one is the other level of stock. When we say the other level of stock, this is the level at which we reorder for to place additional order of supply for material so that the delivery will be made so that the business will not actually run out of stock. And the factor that actually influences it includes the rate of the consumptions, the delivery period, the re it includes the delivery period, and mathematically we compute it as maximum consumption. Let us choose our notes. Reorder level. The other level equal to consumption, consumption times delivery period. Consumption multiplied by what? Delivery period. When we say consumption times delivery period, this consumption is what I call maximum usage maximum usage multiplied by delivery period now let us go to the question what is the maximum usage look at it we are told that 12000 units of material will be delivered will be used every day for 360 days is that not so? And it will cost 50,000 Naira to place each order. Look at it. Daily usage. Daily usage, look here. Daily usage of material A4 will not exceed what? 12,500. That is the maximum usage we can have is 12,500 units. And the minimum we can have is 11,500 units. The other level now equals to maximum usage times what? Delivery period. What is the delivery period? We are told that the maximum delivery period is what? Four days. And the minimum delivery period is what? Two days. Can you see? The other level, okay, let me write this formula. The other level, is maximum usage times maximum delivery period or maximum period, maximum delivery period. What is the maximum usage from the question? As you can see, what is the maximum usage? The maximum usage is what? 12,000. 500 is that not it's 12,500 so you write 12,500 times four the maximum period and this will give us what 12,500 times four four times zero zero Four times zero, zero. Four times five, 20, carry two. Four times two, eight, plus one, 10. Plus two, 10. Carry one, four times one, four, plus one, five. This is 50,000 units. The other level is equal to what? 50,000 units. Having calculated the other level, let us now go to what? minimum stock level for the minimum stock level that one minimum minimum that is the 
lowest level at which stock can be allowed to fall. That is, your stock must not reduce beyond that level. That's why we call it minimum level. The minimum at which your stock should reduce is what you call minimum level. Okay? And the minimum level, minimum stock level, let us call it minimum stock level. The minimum stock level, the minimum stock level, we now equals to what? The other level, this is the other level we've calculated, the other level minus average consumptions. Minus average usage multiplied by what? Average delivery period. Average delivery period. Okay. Average delivery period. Where you are given the average usage, you don't need to calculate. But where you are not given, you will find maximum usage plus minimum usage divided by two. Where you are not given average delivery period, it should be highest maximum period plus minimum period divided by two. What is our other level we calculated? That is 50,000. So we have 50,000 divided by where we given average usage, let's check our question. Okay, let us check our question. If you are given a minimum, fine. Look at it. 12,000 units of material will be used every day for 360. That is minimum. Minimum usage. I mean, sorry, that is the average usage per day. But suppose we are not given. They said daily usage should not exceed what? 12,000 and not less than what? 11,500. We would have said, we can also calculate it as 12,500 plus 11,500 divided by two, which will also give us the same thing. That is in a situation where you are not given. But the situation where you are given, you don't just have to calculate it anymore. Is that taken? Is it that you are given or you are not given? But let me pretend as if we are not given. And let us do it together. OK? Highest is what? 12, 5 plus 11, 5. So average usage is 12,500 plus 11,500 divided by two minus average period. You still come here. Check your average period. Maximum period is four. Maximum period is four. Minimum period is two. Four plus two, that is six divided by two. We give you what? Three. This is four plus two divided by two. So from here, as you can see, we have 50,000 minus 12,000 plus 12, five plus 11, five, we give us 24. 24 divided by two, we give us what? 12,000, ah, this is time, so we give us 12,000. Times four plus two, six. Six divided by two, three. This will equals to what? 50,000 minus 12 times three. That is 36,000. 36,000, 50,000 minus 36,000 will give us what? 14,000 units. Do we get that? Yes. That is the minimum stock level. Shall we go further? 
If you are to move further, we shall go to what? Maximum stock level. Don't forget, be looking as I'm calculating it steadily. The first one that I calculated is sorry, other level. Followed by what? Minimum stock level. Now I want to calculate the maximum stock level. The maximum stock level means the highest quantity of stock that must be, the highest quantities of material that must be in stock before we can say we, are, we will stop ordering. The highest quantity we can have before we can say we will start ordering. Okay, so that is what we call maximum stock level. All right. So I don't know what a maximum stock level is. Why do we determine the maximum stock level? Some of the various factors that led to maximum stock level includes you might not have enough space. And then some of the items might be perishable. Then the cost of storing that normal stock may be too expensive. That is why we need to set a target on controlling all these costs. And ultimately, that is the essence of what we are doing, stock control. So for the maximum stock level, we shall be looking at the other level Maximum stock level will now give us our reorder level plus reorder quantity minus your minimum usage, minimum usage times minimum, minimum times minimum period. Okay. So our other level still remain intact for 50,000 plus what is our other quantity? How many quantity are we to reorder if the stock reach its level? Now let us go. Reorder quantity. Okay, we're told, we're told it is better to just go calculate with other quantity so that it will not give us issue. And in order to calculate the other quantity, we need to calculate for what? EOQ. So let us calculate it. Instead of the other quantity, you can say to avoid confusion, the other level plus EOQ. Okay. So let us leave this. We leave it out first and calculate your word EOQ. And your EOQ is equal to square root 2DCO over what CC, where D equals to the demand, CO, demand means annual demand, CO equals to ordering cost or cost of ordering. Let me say, because I use CO, let me see cost of order. Okay. And CC. CC is your what? CC is your carrying cost. Is that taken? So now, what is our annual demand? 
you will now break it down. D, which is annual demand, it includes what? Let us go back. C. 12,000 units of material will be used every day for a 360 per year. That is, annual demand will now be 12,000 multiplied by 360 to give us the total annual demand. And how much are we placing another? Look at everything here. It will cost 50,000 CDs to place order. That is 50,000 Naira per order. How much is the carrying cost? They said cost of one unit. It will cost one unit of this amount to hold 10% of 12,000 will give us what? Carrying cost. Carrying cost is the same thing as holding cost or holding cost. Okay, or what? Holding cost. I haven't known what you want to calculate. Now, let us calculate them. As I've said, you know, I've already used my mouth to solve it. So let us solve together now. So, and our demand is 12,000 multiplied by the 360 per year. Our carrying cost, they said it will cost us 50,000 Naira to order. 12,000 times 360 punch your calculator. This will give us 4,320,000. After our carrying cost, after our ordering cost, we now have our carrying cost, or which you call ordering cost. And that is 10% of 12,000. And this will give us what? 1,200. The problem is solved. So therefore, your EOQ is square root two times D times CO all over what? CC. At times, if they did not give you carrying cost, they might give you ordering cost, HC. Pay attention. So this will give us square root of two times, what is our annual demand? Four million. 320,000 times 50,000 divided by what? 1,200. We oh, yeah, have punch your calculator. What will it give you? So your EOQ will now give us what? Punch your calculator. As I'm punching, it's also be punching. Yes, good of you. I can see you all in the comment session. Very good. Okay. All right. So it gives us eighteen thousand nine seven four units. Eighteen thousand. Nine seven four units, eighteen thousand nine seven four units. Since we have already gotten eighteen thousand nine seven four units, now go and calculate your maximum stock. Okay, you've gotten your order level now. You cannot calculate our maximum stock. So let's go back to our maximum stock, 18,000. So EOQ is 18,974 minus, what is the minimum usage? We calculate minimum usage earlier. Minimum usage is 11.5 and minimum time is two. So we have, 11,500 times two. 
Okay. The 11,000 times two. So 50,000 plus 18,000, it will give us what? 68,974 minus 11,500 times two. That one give us what? 23,000. If you add them together, it will give us 45,974 units. Okay. I haven't gotten that. Let us now, we have checked, we've calculated the, composite, uh, the computation of the other level. We've done maximum stock. Shall we quickly do uh, average stock? And we land it up there. For the average stock level, For the average stock level, average stock is just a midway between the maximum and the minimum, just like what you've calculated. But this one is average stock level. Average stock level will now be average stock level will now be maximum stock level plus. Minimum stock level, we now divided by what? Divided by two. So what will this give us? Maximum stock level that we calculated gives us what? Maximum stock level is 45,974. 45,974. 45. 974 plus what's our minimum stock level? We have calculated that earlier. The first one we calculated. What's our minimum stock level? This is it 14,000. So you just find the average. 14,000. So divided by two, we give us what? 45,974 plus 14,000. Punch your calculator, divided by two. So this give us 29,987 units. That is that about the other level, material stock control. Let us note that it is important for material to be recorded on receipt based on quantity and the price. Likewise, any issue of material for production can be recorded so that the residual balance of stock in both quantity and in value can be calculated. Likewise, new stock can be ordered when the order level has been reached. It is also important to know that material costs are charged to the appropriate cost center when the materials are issued from the stock. And various stock records that we have include the bin card, the stock tally, and we also have stock ledger card. Is that taking this bin card is just as this. You know, we have already calculated everything. So the bin card is just like that of your invoice. Okay, let's assume IOT limited bin card, sample of bin card, okay? You have IOT limited. For the IOT limited, you have description here. You have the code. You have the reorder quantity. You have the stock ledger, or let me call it folio. You call it folio. 
Then it will add the bin number. It will have maximum stock level. It will have minimum stock level. It will have the other stock level. All this, the card, we call it card. You know, when you're having your invoice, it's just the same thing like that of your word invoice. So we have our date. From the date, you will have what the customer order, the quantity that is being ordered, and the quantity received. Then you will have your allocation. Then you have your work. You have your stock balance. We call it bean card. Okay. After the bean card, you also have that bean card. We also the bean card is what we use for people, lifo, and uh fifo, lifo, or first in last out. Philo, as the case may be, we use a stock card and we use a store bin card for that in order to control the level of stock. Any questions so far? Any question? Okay. While I'm waiting for the question, let us now go to the other element of cost. We have looked at the cost control techniques. We have looked at cost control method. We have looked at the various way by which cost is being controlled. All right. So, by now, we should be able to answer any question that might come from the other level. Anything that has to do with material cost, calculating EOQ, calculating the minimum stock level, calculating the maximum stock level, as well as calculating the other level. Okay, I haven't said that. Everything is explained. Please let us take our time to go through this. All right, let us take time to look at the various way by which the stock out can be controlled. And in our next class, we shall be dealing with FIFO and LIFO method which we call inventory taking system. But it is important for us to know that the various inventory taking system that we have is annual or periodic stock taking, and we have continuous stock taking. The periodic stock taking is the one that actually occurs periodically, either monthly, quarterly, uh annually by annually like that like that or oh, continuous is one we take mostly every day continuous is the one we take mostly every day we when we do our stock counting frequently we call it a uh, continuous inventory taking all this inventory taking is to ensure effective inventory procedure because our stock items needs to be arranged in order to avoid omission and double counting. Likewise, counting stock should be done, not just by one person, but by at least two persons differently. They should not count together. And the stock should be well organized in such a way that we can actually minimize production disruption. Likewise, counting our stock should be done while production is in process and when production is concluded. You do what you call pre-counting and you also do what you call post-production stock taking. That is if you are working in a manufacturing organization. But if you are not, you do what you call, it is usually advisable to do, uh, to do stock counting prior to the production of 
another product. It will also interest us to know that the causes of stock discrepancy usually includes the incomplete entries that is caused by non-completion of original document. When the document of an item is not completed, then incomplete entries might arise. Likewise, casting error on stock record is also likely to arise when there's under or over issue of stock due to the carelessness of the issuing officer, it will, it will cause discrepancy in our stock and it will affect our stock hugely. Likewise, when recording the material is done in a wrong stock record, it will also cause stock discrepancy. Likewise, uh, stock discrepancy also occur as a result of stock movement without documentation. That's one even left to theft, and it's left to, it gives room to, uh, what can I call it? Mismanagement. Likewise, and this privilege. Privilege is when they are stealing the stock one by one. Like if you are working in an assembly company and they remove a component, Let's assume in a car assembly company and they remove the headlights of, ah, no, they will remove the car stereo without the awareness, which we, we call it privilege. Also, loss due to the breakage or evaporation, evaporation might also cause stock decrepancy, omission, and double counting might cost us or inaccurate in the stock count may actually cost us while we are counting our stock. All this needs to be well managed and need a focus when you are doing your inventory control system. And we need to know in summary that what we discuss under material costs, determine, under the material cost determination and control, we explain what actually constitutes the material. We explain the function of the store, and we also look at the factors that facilitate effective material cost control. Likewise, we also concentrated on the material procurement process in an organization. And we also calculate the various storage of material. We look at how material are being issued. We look at the various orders of material. We look at the various methods by which cost of stock can actually be reduced. Likewise, in our next class, we shall be closing it by looking at how closing stock are being valued. That's when we are using fifty four and weighted average plus pricing. I haven't say that. We also look at the various methods of controlling our cost in which we said that the stock control level includes the other level, maximum stock control, minimum stock control, the other quantity known as EOQ. And all this needs to be minimized in order for the organization to improve their revenue. We also briefly look at the bin card, the tally card and the stock card card, the, uh, the store ledger card, which is said the stock control level are maintained using that card. It is that card that we use to issue out most of the stock. In conclusion, it is important for us to note that material cost is very essential and significant in an organization. And the proportion of the total cost of the operation of the business organization is actually centered on cost minimization, especially in a manufacturing organization where they have to minimize the material costs. And in order to maximize our profit, there must be effective way in which we need to control material costs to the minimum. Because by so doing, the revenue, the profits of the organization will be highly minimized. Thank you. Keep your question coming in. In case where there's no question, I wish you all good knowledge. It's sounding 
memory and best of luck in your examination. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day.